Welcome back folks, it's almost time to clean our brushes and pack away today's palette of inspiration. But before we do, let's rejoin SIA professional artist Marilyn Alice as she puts the final finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand Up project. Earlier on you saw me get this painting um, to this stage. I'm now going to carry on with the other three figures. The light is just beautiful. It's such strong light and dark shadows, so it's hopefully going to paint itself. I'm just going to carry on with the face shadows, that mixture of light red and a little bit of burnt umber, uh, of sepia. Just squint gently and just see where to place those darker shadows. So we're not looking at features, we're just looking at light and dark shapes. A shadow on his hand there. On to the next person. And the final person. His face is quite a lot of shadow, just a tiny little bit of light hitting it, but that doesn't matter. It's all good. I notice that I've left the lady out on the end. I don't think she really helps the composition. I think these four figures are the main characters. Some burnt umber now mixed with a little bit of French ultramarine for the dark hair. Quite a thick mix. Just a little bit of light hitting the top of his head, just some clear water. We can just pull that out gently. It's a nice soft light hitting the top of his head and the same with this guy. I use a smaller brush and just use a mix with more blue in this time. Again, it's still very thick. I'll pop this hat on. Keep squinting if you're not sure where the light and dark shapes are. A little bit of brown on the brush, the burnt umber. Let's show his hair there. All right, we might as well just pop in the cups. There's a little bit of decoration on them, not too much. But that would just help to show it up because they're white. Now the lovely darks of the jackets, so that mix, the French ultramarine burnt umber, very, very thick again, lots and lots of squinting, and just pop in those dark shapes with a size 16 brush. Oh, unfortunately there's a lot of light on that, so there's not too many dark shadows. And then that coat comes down underneath. Now onto the next guy, it's more or less the same colour coat, so mix up some more paint. They're wrapped up really well, aren't they, considering it's so hot and sunny there. It's... I just keep looking at those shadows all the time. I'm going to leave a little bit of a white line underneath his sleeve because it's such a dark join there. It, would just, it wouldn't show up. So by leaving a white line, you can just see where his arm sits there. And on to the last guy. Again, more squinting. Got all these sort of triangular shapes. And we can leave a white line just under his arm to show that up. Just 
to pretend where his jacket ends. As there's a lamp post in the way, which probably isn't good to put in the picture. Right, now to, for the blue jeans. So just dip the brush straight into that French ultramarine. A slightly different blue, so we'll go for the darker blues first. Again, that trick with leaving a bit of a white line to separate his legs. Keeping that light on the trousers. Something a little bit more burnt umber into that will finish his shoes as well. Don't put every mark in, just a few to sort of indicate them, keeping those light shadows there. So final squint to make sure that everything dark is in there that you need. And that's one guy enjoying Christmas Eve. On to the next one. His trousers are slightly bluer, so I'm just going to use some French ultramarine mixed very thick with a tiny bit of burnt umber, so it looks very blue. And then into that darker mix for the leg that's behind. Just pop those shoes in. A dark coat here that we've missed. And then some blue on its own for the other jeans. Looking at those light and dark shapes. A little white line again. Just mix a little bit of brown in so the shoes are a slightly different colour, those trainers. I'm not putting the patterns or anything in, that it doesn't really need it. So much going on. You just join that leg up with the socks. Alright, some dark. Brown mixed with some burnt umber just for those tables. Right now some of the background, so we need some dark. So the big brush, we use a size 20 and some French ultramarine, burnt umber, just very, very thick. Let's get some of those dark shapes in, quite blue. Dark will actually show up the white on his leg. So you can see why that you need a good point on whatever brush you're using so that you can paint around your subject. Let's darken this even more. Just going to add a little bit of Prussian blue into that mix, just to give it a little bit more colour to that dark down here. Right, using a credit card, I'm just going to put some of the lines of that wood in. So we just load the brush with that dark Gunji paint. Slide that along, any card will do. So you're putting lots of thick paint on each time, loading the card and then just sliding it down the paper. Just pop in a few little shadows there just to bring that alive. Right, 
Now we need to anchor these people down. They're floating around a little bit at the moment. So just using that French ultramarine and burnt umber. And size 16 brush. Just join that shadow in. This is where it really starts to come to life when those shadows are put in. It anchors them down, but it actually makes it look quite three-dimensional. And there's a few bags and bits and pieces on the ground, just using some French ultramarine, just sort of fill in those spaces. Have a quick look over and see if there's any dark shapes that still need to go in. So there we have our finished painting. I hope you've enjoyed watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks Marilyn, love how the loose style, beautiful bright light and strong shadows all come together to capture the relaxed atmosphere of Bourbon Street, great work. Okay, before we take a look at a few more of your artistic dilemmas, we've just got time to remind you that the deadline for entries for our summer competition is now closed. We've been absolutely amazed at the staggering response we've received. The lucky winner will be selected at random and announced on air on the 26th of August, so remember to join us on Bank Holiday. And in the meantime, a big thank you and good luck to all those who have entered. Right, it's time to solve a few more of your artistic dilemmas. Let's start off with this one. How resistant to sunlight is liquid Chinese ink and how does it compare to other black inks available? We, it's quite an interesting question. We spoke to uh, Windsor & Newton about this, the manufacturers uh, of the Indian ink, and they said that it's pretty much light fast for long periods. It will. It will, it will see for many, many years. Uh, De La Rowney's FW Black Ink as well is also very light fast as well. The Chinese ink sold by the SAA will not fade for three years. However, after time, it will start to fade if in direct sunlight. A cracking bit of advice for this is to get your paintings framed and put it behind a UV glass, which any framer will do for you. And this way, it will protect it for many, many years to come. Well, we hope you've enjoyed getting closer to some of your favourite TV artists and that we've encouraged you to try something new. Remember, if you want, you can share your work or interact with thousands of people who share your passion for painting. Log on to www.saa.co.uk and look out for the Community tab. In the meantime, we look forward to joining you on another Splash of Paint, packed full of inspirational tips, top tricks to support you on your artistic journey. I'll see you soon. Whether you're a beginner, improver or professional, discover more about the full range of SAA membership benefits available to bring a bigger splash of paint into your life. Visit www.saa.co.uk for details.